to start off, here is the problem that we designed in class. So it is a radio antenna tower. It looks like this. There's two levels on it. Each of these levels are 20 meters. The width of this base is 20 as well. And at the top, this is five. Um, then there are these cross trusses that come over here like that. Um, <coughs> and just to make this problem a little bit more interesting, we're gonna add some rollers on the base. So the rollers are gonna be inclined at let's say a 45 degree angle because I'm lazy and I don't wanna do math. Um, so yeah. Um, so the first thing you should always ask yourself when you come to these kind of problems is, how do I make my life easier? What are some things you can do? And if you know that the loads on this structure are symmetric, that means, let's say, let's put a force here. Let's say this is 10. Let's put another force here and 10. <clears throat> so a force like that, where it's symmetric, it's even on both sides. You don't expect the trusses in the center to rotate. Then you could just cut your model in half and basically say, all right, I'm gonna cut it in half like that. I'm gonna make my model symmetric and that way you'll save half as much computational power. And uh, yeah, just as you start working with larger models, this will really make a difference. Now, for example, if you use a asymmetric load, for example, if there was a wind gust on the tower like this, then you wouldn't be able to use the symmetric condition. Uh, but we're gonna try to do this right now with symmetry because that's what you need for your homework. <coughs> so we're gonna do this problem um, in Abacus CAE. So you open up Abacus CAE. <coughs> and then the first thing you're gonna wanna do, so if you look here, there's a whole list of modules. And basically, if you go straight down this module list, um, you'll have everything you need to do to finish your part and finish your model and get your results. So if you open up this part section and you create a part, you're gonna see all these different options. It could be 3D, 2D, axisymmetric, which is basically a revolved part, and all these different types, all these shapes. <clears throat> so because we're using a 2D approximation, we can use 2D planar, and we're gonna use a wire because we're modeling this. <laughs> <clears throat> the structure with trusses, which is basically composed of wires. Um, this approximate size doesn't really matter too much, um, but it just changes the size of the grid that you have for drawing. So um, because our size of our structure, if you look at it, the maximum size is 60. And so, you know, 200 is a pretty good estimate for that. So hit continue. <clears throat> You'll get this grid. So this is your drawing area. If you're familiar with, say, SolidWorks, this is your sketch plane. Um, so you see here are a lot of different options of what you can draw or what you can delete and trim. Um, these buttons with black arrows on the corner, if you press and hold them, it'll give you extra options that you can choose from. Um, so just looking at this truss, we we'll probably just want to build this with a bunch of straight lines. <coughs> so the first thing I'm going to do, this one right here, is create lines. Um, two ways to draw new lines. You can either just click them on the sketch plane, or you can enter coordinates. So I'm going to enter coordinates because it's just a lot easier for me to do that. So starting point for a line, I'm going to say is at 10, 0. That's going to be this bottom corner right here. So 10, 0, put that in. And then the top would be 5, 60. <coughs> now I'm going to draw the entire um, structure just because I need to to be able to draw the crisscross lines. If you look here, we don't know the position of these intersections. And so we really have to draw the entire structure to get these points. So. Just keep trying the structure. So minus five, 
60 minus times zero. And then and draw a point at zero, 20, straight across. <clears throat> now here's a place where a lot of you guys might get errors. So if you draw like this and then you go back over, you'll actually have two lines that go over each other right here. And Abacus doesn't like that. He'll probably scream at you and tell you there's something wrong. So uh, at this point, just hit escape and just draw another line instead of going back. Do the same thing for the next level. <coughs> now I'm going to draw the diagonal bars. Uh, <clears throat> so I actually made an error right here. So this length is 10 when it should be five. Um, so I'm too lazy to go back and change it. So I'm just gonna change the problem and say, uh, take that out and make this 10. Doesn't really matter too much because uh, this is just an example. So this is our radio tower <clears throat> to do symmetry you're gonna to need to first draw basically a construction line. Um, so I'm gonna draw a construction line like this. Uh, and one that goes straight up. And now that I have this line, I can use this trim option right here and just get rid of all the extra pieces that I don't need. Oops. <clears throat> so here's half my truss. Um, once you're happy with this, just hit escape and then hit done. <clears throat> and you're good to go. Um, so the next step on here is property. So properties, these mean section properties <laughs> and material properties. So if you look here, first you can create a material. So I'm gonna make a material and call it steel. And we we'll <coughs> here you can give it any properties that you want, but really what you care about for this problem is just mechanical properties. So mechanical elasticity, I'm going to make this 200, <coughs> make this 0.3. Um, so remember, Abacus does not have units. And so really, you have to keep track of the units that you use um, as you build your model. So I'm just going to say this is 200. Even though it's probably 200 times e to 6 or something. Um, so I create a new material. I hit OK. Then the next step I need to do is create a section. So go to beam, and we're using tr <coughs> trusses. So we're gonna create a truss section right here. Let's call this truss section. And it's gonna ask me for a material, so I choose steel, which is what I created before, and a cross-sectional area. So let's just say everything has an area of one. So hit okay. And next we've created materials and we've created a section, but we haven't actually applied it to our model yet. So next thing that you're gonna wanna do is hit this assign section button. You hit it <coughs> and basically it's asking, all right, so we have these section properties. Where do you want me to put them? So just select all of the parts, all the regions that you want to give the section property. We're gonna select all of them, hit done and use this truss section that you just created. So I select this, hit OK, and boom, we're good to go. Um, <coughs> next, <coughs> we're going to the assembly module. And the assembly module is similar to in SolidWorks as well, where you can create parts and then you put the parts together in an assembly. So in the assembly module, you're gonna create a part instance and here you can choose between 
meshing on the part and meshing on the instance. <clears throat> now the difference between these two might not matter for now, but when you start using more complicated geometries, complicated assemblies, it might start to matter. So when you mesh on the part, it means that the mesh is associated with the part itself, and it's gonna be the same for every single instance that you create. But if you choose independent, that means that this mesh is in the assembly level. And that means that if you have multiple parts that need to fit together a certain way and have nodes that line up in a certain way, then the mesh will depend on the assembly instead. Um, so we're gonna use dependent. And so just hit dependent, hit okay. Um, then you're gonna wanna create a step. <clears throat> and like we talked about, steps are just basically systems of loads and boundary conditions that you want to apply to your model. So you create a step. There's all these different steps that you can choose between. Um, the one that we're gonna to wanna to use is the static general step because we're just applying a static load. So hit continue. Um, and here you can choose between the time period. This number doesn't really matter in a static step because everything is in quasi-static equilibrium anyways. Um, but here you can choose between nonlinear and, lo and uh, linear geometry. Um, basically, when you start having large displacements, you can't really use the same assumptions that you use for linear geometries. Um, you'll get extra terms, and so you're gonna wanna choose on, basically if you have anything in the range of about 5% strain. Um, we're just gonna keep it off for now. <clears throat> you can also add damping, um, and you can also change your time increment depending on how, uh, I guess, this is more for dynamic models, so don't worry about that for now. Um, so just hit okay. And then, you don't have to worry about interaction. We don't have any of those in this model. Um, but next we're gonna wanna start adding loads to our system. So loads include both external forces as well as our boundary conditions. Um, so the first thing, <clears throat> when you hit create load, you can see all these different types of loads. Um, looking back at our model, we're just applying a 10 Newton load at this node right here. So concentrated force, hit continue, and we're going to apply it to this node right here. So just click it, hit done. <clears throat> and then there's a couple important things to note here. So first thing here is it asks for the coordinate system. So this is basically asking, all right, in what coordinate system am I gonna apply these loads in? So right now it's global, which is this one right here, this X and Y, and we're applying a force in the minus 10 direction, so, or the minus Y direction with a magnitude of 10. <clears throat> so we're gonna put minus 10 here, just hit okay. And now you see there's an arrow, so this means that there's a force being applied to this node. <coughs> The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a boundary condition. So hit create boundary condition. And there's a couple of different boundary conditions that you can choose, symmetry, displacement, et cetera. So let's go with the easy one first. We know that these nodes here in the center all have a symmetric boundary condition. So we're gonna hit symmetry. We'll call this our symmetric boundary condition. <coughs> And hit continue. And just select all these points. You can select more than one point at once by holding the shift button down. So just click on all those points. Hit done. And so we're gonna want to have it not move in the X direction. So all of these nodes right here, they cannot move horizontally. They can only move vertically. And so if you look at your options here, <clears throat> we're gonna pick X symmetric because that means that U1 is constrained. So we hit okay. Um, so now we have our symmetric boundary conditions right here. So that's good. And now the second boundary condition we need is this one right here, a roller at 45 degrees. <clears throat> so 
create another boundary condition. And this one, we're actually going to choose a displacement rotation boundary condition. So when you hit continue and you choose this node, <clears throat> now the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new coordinate system. So remember in the truss lecture, um, when you have a roller, you want to make the displacements and the forces in a local coordinate system um, that's defined by the plane of the roller. So if you look here, <coughs> you can create a datum thesis. Um, this is basically making a, a coordinate system that you can use for the rest of your model. So click that. Um, we're doing, we're working with rectangular coordinates. So just call this uh, roller thesis. <clears throat> hit continue and so it's going to ask for three things it's going to ask for the origin it's going to ask for a point on the x-axis and a point in the xy plane so just to make things simple i'm going to make the origin the point where the roller is and now if you think about it a point on the x-axis means at a 45 degree angle means that it has to be somewhere along here right so if this point is at 10 0 then a point on the x-axis will be 11, 1. So I'm going to put 11, 1. And as you see right here, um, the red corner system just rotated. So now the x-axis is pointed in the 45 degree um, direction. And now I have to pick a point on the x-y plane. Uh, we're in a 2D system, so any point works, really. So just pick a point. And now you've created a new corner system. So once you have this new coordinate system, you want to click this cursor button and then choose from your datum thesis list and pick the coordinate system that you just created, this roller thesis. So select that, hit OK. And in this coordinate system, now we want to constrain the movement of this node in the y direction. Remember, in this roller, it can move along this direction, but it can't move in this direction, right? So we're going to make u2 equal to 0. <clears throat> so we're going to hit OK. Um, and then, actually, let's change this problem a little bit. Let's actually add another load, and you'll see why I want to do this. So let's add one more load over here. And let's make this five Newtons. So at this node, we're going to have another force. So we have to create a new load. <clears throat> so you create a load, a concentrated force. And we're going to apply it to this node. We're going to hit done. And the concentrated force is minus five. Hit OK. All right, good. So now the next step is to create a mesh. We have our part, but we haven't discretized it into elements and nodes yet, right? So we're going to hit mesh and <clears throat> then click on seed part instance. Now, Abacus CAE doesn't like that. And that's because we're in the assembly level. Um, remember, when we created our instance, we said we wanted to mesh it on the part and not the assembly. So go to your model tree, open up your part list, and double click on this mesh section. When you open this up, now when you click seed part, it works. <coughs> and the first thing you'll ask for is the global size. Basically what this is asking you is, what is the average size of elements that you want? So if you, want, if you make this number really small, this means that your elements are going to be really small. So let's say I put one and I hit apply. If you look at your screen right now, all these circles means that Abacus is going to create a node at all of these circles. And essentially, you're going to get a whole bunch of elements. Um, we don't want that in this problem. We just want to have trusses, a single element for each truss part. <clears throat> so we're going to make this global size larger. So I'm going to make it 100, hit apply. And now you can see there's only a, there's a much smaller number of nodes. And Basically, this is Abacus saying, all right, we're going to have only, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
we're going to have 12 elements now instead of however many we had before. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, you could, <clears throat> if you wanted, you could also seed edges. And basically, this would make, um, this would seed a single part instead of the entire part. <clears throat> I mean, seed, seed a single section instead of the entire. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, see the section instead of the entire part. So if I did this and I made this really small, you can see here that it's making only this section in purple uh, with these smaller elements. Um, so I don't want that. <clears throat> the next thing you're going to want to do is assign the element type. So it's this button right here. And basically, you select all the regions you want to assign, hit done, and this is where you choose what kind of elements you want to use, whether it's beams or trusses or whatever. Um, so go to family, scroll down, choose trusses. Um, you can choose between linear and quadratic trusses. <coughs> so we're going to use linear trusses. And so just hit OK. Uh, done. And now you can actually mesh your part. So when you hit mesh part, yes. Now Abacus says, all right, we've generated parts. Um, there's something, uh, yes. So it says I have 31 elements, and that's because I actually seeded this edge right here. So I don't, <coughs> I don't want, <coughs> want that. So I'm going to get rid of it. Um, by deleting that <clears throat> and now remeshing my part. <clears throat> so now it says I have 12 elements and that's what we expect. Um, so now that we have the <coughs> mesh done, we're going to create a job. So go to job, create a job, name it whatever, so radio antenna. Or radio tower. Continue. Um, you can choose how much memory you want to use. You can choose how many CPUs you want to use. Um, but for now, just hit OK. And now, if you go in your model tree, you create a job. If you right click it, you can see all these different options. You can write the input file, you can do a data check, or you can submit it. Um, so I'm just going to just hit submit. And now Abacus is yelling at me. It's telling me that there are different coordinate systems on the same region. And that's because at this node right here, we're using a local coordinate system to define the boundary condition, but we're also using the global, global, we're using the global coordinate system to define the load. And basically, you can't have two coordinate systems at the same node. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is go to your loads. Um, that's this one right here. <clears throat> you're, want to, you're going to want to change this load to be in the local corner system. So hit edit, datum CSIS list, roller. And now you have to decompose this load into the two directions so that it actually forms your resultant load. So that's going to be minus 5 over square root of 2 for both directions. Um, notice that you can do math in here. So you, if you're too lazy to actually calculate the number, you can make Abacus do the math. So you hit OK. And now if you look at it, the directions have changed. Now it's decomposed the five Newtons in the vertical direction into these two loads that are, I guess, along and normal to the roller. So now, when I hit submit, everything should be fine. Uh, while it's running, you can hit monitor and basically see what's going on in the background. You'll see if Abacus has finished data check and any errors or warnings there might be. So we're just going to wait for this to run. <coughs> Do 
<clears throat> um, while we're waiting, we can take a look at the folder it's in. So as Abacus runs, it creates a bunch of different files. Um, we've talked about some of them, but some notable ones, this log file basically locks the file, which means you can't have multiple jobs running at the same time that have the same name. Um, what else is important? These files just mean it's running. Um, Eventually, a uh, let's open this stat file. <coughs> um, so this status file right here basically will show you how far Abacus has completed. Um, so if, say, I was doing a dynamic solution where this time was 10 and there were multiple steps, then I would be able to say, all right, Abacus has completed five steps. So we're like halfway there. Um, so the status file says that we're done. <coughs> and so it's created this ODB file. Um, and the ODB file is what we're going to look at in CAE. So kill this. Um, go to results. And this looks funky. Um, if you go to options, common, and change the scaling factor to a smaller number, say 0.1, you can change how much deformation um, you see. Um, you can also animate this and make it dance for you, make it pretty. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, I think that's all you'll need. Um, Good luck. <laughs>